There's a look at Paul Brown Stadium here in Cincinnati, Ohio. The enthusiasm of this Cincinnati crowd in full effect a moment ago as their Bengals took the field to the delight of this sold-out crowd. And they're all set as they'll match up. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25 with the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota now ready for their next possession. and 10 Cousins and his first pass is incomplete he was trying to find Justin Jefferson there and that'll bring up second down and that one going to be off target and incomplete from the 24 they'll go again on second and 10 here's Cousins and he's got the hook up here it's Kyle Rudolph and he's brought down after a very nice gain. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. But when you hit him on the move like that, and he's able to get into open field with a full head of steam, oh boy, it's going to be tough to get him down. Yeah, there was a big window. They're lucky they did get him down. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he's going to have just a couple here with a marker on the field as well. He was trying to clear the way, the big fullback. Instead, he gets a hole. And you don't see that very often on running plays from those guys because usually they're the lead blocker. Normally, when he gets caught, it's in a passing situation. Cousins gives way to Cook. And he's got room. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. Now that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Rudolph on the receiving end from Cousins. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 36. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh set of downs. So from the 36 now, first and 10. From the shotgun, it's Cousins. Looking sideline, incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And Rudolph has it, the tight end. And they'll get eight out of this before being stopped at the 28. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this has started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. And he's brought down, but following a pretty juke move that gives him the first down. They're able to convert with a gain of four. Had a chance to maybe limit them to three if they could have gotten that stop there, but a new set of downs. And with a new set of downs, you got to take the mentality of the whole thing. Right now, everyone's looking at the offense and saying they've got the advantage. The best defenses just say, okay, new set of downs. It gives us another chance to make a play ourselves and maybe change things up. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. On the ground, it's Cook. 
so quick on the spin. Uh, he's spinning, man. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14, before he's out of bounds. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. Kirk Cousins on the connection to Justin Jefferson. And the Vikings take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. That was a really good opening drive on a number of fronts. Ten plays, very methodical, set the tone. So you know right now, if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're on the sideline saying, okay, what do we have to dial up in order to get off the field a lot faster? Because both sides are out there for 10 plays, but one side comes off energized, and the other side comes off with some questions. Dan Bailey. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Cincinnati now ready to take the field. Bengals with a first and 10 at their 25-yard line. Now a first carry for Giovanni Bernard. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. He was brought down. He was brought down by Eric Wilson. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. On second down, Bernard, and he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he's going to be stopped here a few yards short of the first as the tackle is made at the 33. It's a gain of six, but not enough as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. So on fourth down, on comes the left-footed punter, Kevin Huber, to punt it away. After one, seven-nothing on EA Sports. Seven, Bengals nothing. So on is the lefty, Kevin Huber, to kick it away for the Bengals here on fourth down. K.J. Osborne deep for Minnesota. Now a high kick, almost a pooch punt. Fair catch, signal four, and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Vikings will take over here, first and ten. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. 
Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out if they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. Cousins on third and two. And this is going to be incomplete. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand, and forcing a three and out, and giving the ball back to their offense. So on fourth down, Britton Colquitt on to punt. Alex Erickson deep for Cincinnati. And now a high kick here as they'll try to cover this one. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. That'll go in the books. It's just a 16-yard punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. Take it in by T. Higgins. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. From midfield now, Burrow. This pass complete to Higgins. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. One of the selling points of the in route is against the quarterback, a really nice sight line to his receiver. And almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. On first down, Bernard. And yeah, he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. He's brought down. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their huddle with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Burrow's throw going to be caught by Boyd. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 24-yard line. Burrow to Boyd there for the Cincy first. Great change up there on the route and got that inside release, made it a successful pitch and catch. Well, the first thing you want to do is have him thinking that you're going outside. Make a move in that direction. Then you really don't run the route against the whole body of the defender. You run against a half of him, and the inside half, and he took it right across his face, got inside, and won that route in a big way. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Burrow. Green with a catch left side. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a really nice 15 yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. First and goal at the four yard line. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Here's Burrow. Escaping the pressure, and he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. Taking it in from four yards out, and the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. A 
pretty sure that that was a passing play, but he took off pretty quickly and ran with it. Love his decisiveness on it because you're exactly right. He was supposed to go back in the pocket and survey the field and throw the football, but when that hole opened, he just said, forget it, let's go. And boy, did that work out well. Extra point up and good by Bullock, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. So only even at seven now as they kick it away. Taken about seven yards deep. And this will come out to the 25 as Osborne elects not to return it. And now out comes Minnesota. Tie ball game, still a little more than a minute to go in the half. The question, can they put something together here, try to take that lead into intermission? I would have to think that would be the goal for sure. I don't think you sit on anything here. Here's your opportunity. Push it downfield. As you mentioned, it's a tie game. So minus a disaster on your part, you've got that in your back pocket. Go ahead and try and get some points and feel great going into the half. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the game there, second down. Three-yard pickup brings up second and seven. Now Cousins setting up the screen for Cook. Cook a first down and more. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. Now after that last play, there's a Bengal down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. down. Here's Cousins. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. Dalvin Cook is running back the intended target, but it's going to be second down. You can tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Cousins again. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And it's third down. The second down completion got him seven. Now here's third and three. Again, it's Cousins. And he's got Kyle Rudolph. And he will have a Vikings first down, and he was able to get it by plenty. A gain of eight on third and three. The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So here's a first and ten at the 38. To the air again, it's Cousins. Battle here to Rudolph. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. From the red zone now, Cousins. Complete, Jefferson the target. 
And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. And that's going to be incomplete. 12 seconds left. They were looking for Johnson that time, but it'll be second and goal. Second and goal. A line of scrimmage once again, the five as they get ready for second and goal. From the gun, here's Cousins. It's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Chad Beebe in the final seconds of the first half. And the Vikings have taken the lead. There was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. And he knocks it through. Makes the score, Vikings 14, Bengals 7. So not much time to work with here. Nine seconds remain in the half as this one is away. Here's Carter now on the return. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. Cincinnati set to take over once again. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Well, the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. And with time running short here, they'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach, the Bengals with work to do in this third quarter, but they'll get the football first as we are back underway. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Bengal offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. The former second-round pick, this is Joe Mixon. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Burrow looking to pass on the screen. Bernard. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. 
They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield. A really nice pickup. Third and two, now Burrow. He's got his man, Boyd. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Mixon with a first down carry. And three yards there takes him to the 45. Eric, all any running back wants is a little bit of room, a little bit of space in order to maneuver. But he also understands how difficult it is for his offensive line up front. So if they give him any space, he realizes his job to make more out of it than what they give him. Picks up three on that carry. On second down, Burrow. Got an open man, that's C.J. Uzama. I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. On first and ten, Joe Burrow. Boyd's the target, and he has it over the middle. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Now, that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because it gets man. It's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. No game. We talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter as a good running back dive play. On third down, Burrow. He's going to drop this one down to Bernard, and he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon, and it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. At that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? They'll run on first down. Mixon. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. That one whistled against a big right tackle. You'd think being able to fire out and block, it'd be a lot easier to not commit a holding penalty, but it's tough to keep those guys right in front, isn't it? Bernard getting the handoff from Burrow. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. Ball carrier. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. So still 14 yards to go, second down. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow looking middle, and that's complete. And the Bengals are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. At the two-yard line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports.
A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven, but first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. A two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bengals are an extra point away from tying up this football game. Well, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, but his top two options were not available on that throw, so he went the safe route, worked out pretty well. It was like you were in the pocket. How about you going through the progressions like that? But a lot of offenses say, touchdown to check down. Look downfield first, bring it back to the line of scrimmage. Not easy for a rookie to do. Oftentimes they get one look, and they make their decision off of that. He went through three. That was impressive. K.J. Osborne. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Well, they just gave up the score to tie it. That's the bad news. The good news, plenty of time in this fourth quarter to try to grab that lead back. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much for the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, they want to ride him down the stretch. He should have fresh legs. Cook on the first down carry there as he works his way forward for a gain of about four. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. To throw on second and six, Cousins. Completing it to the right side, Johnson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 11 yards there, first down. First down, Vikings. him down after just a short pickup. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Defensively, we always know that he is tough in run support, and I think the way that he gets there is he understands what an offense is going to do before the ball's even snapped. A great job of scouting prior to the game, then reading, reacting, and taking the right path to the ball carrier. From the 44, Cousins to Jefferson on the slant. And he's got another first down as the tackle's going to be made at the Bengals' 26. 18 yards the gain for number 18. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars, and he came through with a nice catch right there. A tenth carry in the game for Cook, and he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. But from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Again, it's Cook. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. And we got an injury here. And I believe, yes, that's the wideout, Adam Thielen. While the trainers take a look, we'll step aside. Come on. 
One of the bigger plays in the game thus far. The crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. Draw play, Cousins to Cook. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. A bit of a surprise. They ran it on third and medium. Proved to be the right call. First and 10. Minnesota. Field goal could get him the lead, but it might not be enough here as they come up on first and goal. They'll run with Cook, and he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. An eight-yard touchdown run, and the Vikings are going to take the lead. Hey, that score deserves our respect, deserves our excitement. But I'm looking at the clock, and I'm thinking, there's a long way to go in this one. Ideally, they would have liked to milk a little bit more time off. Now, on the other sideline, you start to get the crew together and say, this is what we practiced the two-minute drill for, right? Yeah, you hope you've been in that situation before, and if you haven't, you just have the confidence. Hey, let's go down there and get this thing done. But, boy, that's a big score right there to give them the advantage. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded in the end zone. And Wilson is perfectly content to bring this out to the 25, a touchback. So Burrow and the Bengals down 21-14. Just under two minutes to go. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. to throw and a quick throw here that's complete and he gets this one just shy of the 40 down at the 39 first down yardage on the first play of the drive 14 yards that gets them the first down but they've still got to move quickly here at the 39 yard line first down now but that clock rolling here we go with Burrow Green's got it over the middle and he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 12 yards that time, and a Cincinnati first down. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. And Burrow's saying, let's go, let's go. Burrow going to fake to mix it and now look to throw. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Normally being a big-bodied receiver plays to their advantage downfield. Go up and make the catch, take the hit, and pick up yardage. But in this, the hit was timed really well and popped it free from his grasp. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Now the Bengals going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. Now it's Burrow. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does, and in the second quarter, he may very well run by him, but in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. 
And he comes back with one complete. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. One crisis averted, but they still need to move hastily. He's back to throw. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. The Bengals going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. His throw caught right around the six. Now the Bengals going to signal for their third and final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the ball game. decision to make on the conversion down seven but first things first they need to score as they come up on first and goal now here's a look for the end zone but that one's going to wind up incomplete AJ Green incomplete brings up second and goal scrimmage once again the five as they get ready for second and goal throwing now is Joe Burrow and he's gonna go down sacked back at the 13 yard line by Daniil Hunter in there to drop him as that clock continues to run and on second and goal they decide to throw it again and this result is even worse they take a sack on first down it was simply an incomplete pass not a good first two plays beginning with first and goal well, no doubt an electrifying finish to have it down inside the 10-yard line. That final shot, though, they couldn't get it in the end zone, and that's all she wrote. And they had the final shot. The last snap taken that close to the end zone, they don't get it in, so they'll regret that. But flip it over, making a stand in that portion of the field, congratulations to them. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long from Cincinnati.